Hello, everyone. My name is Wang Yihao, a first-year PhD student from Tsinghua University. Excited to be here and present our paper, Temporal Seeding Convex Lens, a Seeding-Assisted Practical DDoS Attack. I will organize the, the presentation as follows. Now, let's move on to the background. Our inspiration comes from a military tactic used in World War I. Please imagine a war scenario our artillery unit is able to fire one shell per minute. The enemy's bunker is very sturdy. Uh, it may need an uh, instant impact of more than five shells to be destroyed. Even if all the artillery, art artillery units fire at, at max, we can only launch one shell at, in a minute. How can we improve the instant attack capability to destroy the bunker with many shells at once? Seems impossible, right? Please take a few moments to ponder this. The clever British military devised a solution shown in the diagram. By precisely arrange different artillery units to launch shells with varied flight times, they can ensure that all shells hit the target together. This tactic is known as multiple round simultaneous impact, shortly MRSI and is widely supported by long-range artillery in modern army. This strategy is very effective, concentrating the attacker's capability from the time aspect into one moment, overwhelming the target. The target is also stealth. Observing each artillery, the firing rate seems low. The prime target of this attack is that those moments to go down, but needs hours to recover like military airfields and bridges. Fine, from the story, I believe that you guys have already understand the core concept of this, uh, this tactic. Now let's apply this into the internet. In 2015, Vern Paxson have uh, implemented a pulsing DDoS attack by abusing OpenDNS resolvers, achieving a bandwidth concentration ratio of about uh, 40 times. In our work, CDN act as the artillery, achieving a ratio of over 1,000 times. So what is a CDN? A CDN is a network of ser servers globally distributed for a fast web content delivery. CDN acts as reverse proxies in front of websites. When a user visits a, a CDN-deployed website, the HTTP request will be routed to the nearest edge server. This edge server is responsible for fetch resources from the cache or from the origin server if cache misses. The prime, the prime benefit from, of CDN is to shield websites from denial of service attack. Next, what's, it, what, what's possible with DDoS attack? It's a sophisticated form of DDoS attack that involves short bursts of high intensity traffic targeting the victim. These pulses alternate with periods of low activity, making it challenging for traditional defense mechanism to detect and mitigate the attack effectively. Next, let's dive into the details. As shown in the figure, the attacker precisely control the timing of HTTP requests sent to the different CDN edge servers, causing these requests to converge at the origin server simultaneously, generating a pulse wave on the origin server side. Next, I will introduce five specific steps of this attack. First, the attacker needs to scan or fingerprint the internet to collect IP set of CDN edge servers. Here, I would like to mention one CDN feature used in our attacker, that is the, the CDN edge servers are allowed to forward HTTP requests that with a valid host, so host header. In step two, creating accounts on the major CDNs and configure them to point to the victim website. Also, CDN lacks of ownership verification for the origin server, which means that every, anyone who has an account can insert an entry into the CDN's forwarding table with any origin server address. Third, measure the network path latency from the attacker to the victim through multiple CDN edge servers. After the measurement, 
stable edge servers will be selected as the artillery for the subsequent attack stages. Fourth, identify the bottleneck resource on the victim server, bypassing the cache mechanism by appending random URL parameters. In the last step, utilizing the latency data previously collected, the attacker deliberately selected the edge servers and precisely scheduled the timing of HTTP requests. Consequently, the victim will receive precisely arranged HTTP request pause from the attacker saturating the victim's website. In our paper, we present one basic attack and four enhanced attacks. I will introduce them one by one. In the basic attack, the attacker synchronized the flight time of each HTTP request solely using the pre-measured path latency. As you can see in the, in the diagram, the red area on the left side represents the attacker's out, outbound bandwidth, while the blue area on the right side represents the incoming traffic received by the victim. The results indicate that the, the bandwidth concentration ratio for the basic attack is only six. So why did we such, obtain such a low concentration ratio? We found that the primary factor limiting the ratio is the longest forwarding time. The more time allowed to send the requests, the higher the pulse wave is. Therefore, we, come up, we, we came up with the idea that uh, we should enlarge or control the latency by several ways. Here comes the four enhanced attacks. The first en enhancement is chaining multiple CDN together to increase the flight time. This approach showed some improvements over the basic attack with the ratio reaching around the nine. Second, we deploy CDN, when, we de when we deploy CDNs, the customer can specify not the IP addresses, but also the domain name of the original server. That enforces CDN to do the DNS query. That may also be utilized to increase the longest forwarding time. With this enhancement, we achieved a concentration ratio of about uh, 17. We also discovered that when CDN receive IP fragments, they must reassemble the, the fragmented IP packets before forwarding them to the origin server. By, by exploiting this mechanism, we were able to further increase the ratio to, to about 140. The fourth and the best enhancement is shown in the diagram. Like IP fragmentation mechanism, typically, CDN must receive the complete HTTP request before forwarding them to the original server. So the attacker can firstly establish TCP connections uh, to a lot of CDN, CDN edge, edge servers and send the HTTP request to all the connections slowly. For example, sending one byte or one trunk per second, but holds back the last byte or the last trunk. After accumulating enough data, in, receiving the buff, in the receiving buffer of CDN edge nodes, the, the, the attacker then sends the remaining last part to, the, to all nodes. At that point, all nodes receive the complete HTTP request. They will, they, they will, cause, uh, they will for, forward the complete HTTP request to the origin server simultaneously, causing a huge bandwidth pressure on the victim. Now, we were able to push the ratio to a maximum of several thousands. We carefully designed a real-world experiment, selecting only a few dozens of edge servers to launch the attacks against a WordPress deployed on our own VPS. Uh, here's a video uh, showing that the victim web server being killed by the kernel in a 10-minute attack for out of memory. Due to the time limit, we will see if there is any extra time to play the video after the presentation. Next, let's discuss the mitigation section. For the, for the CDN providers, we call on them to add ownership verification for the origin server. That will prevent malicious attacker from directing CDN traffic to a third party CDN services. We also suggesting that fast forwarding every part of HTTP request and adding uh, a unified HTTP request header to unveil the real client IP address, etc. For the victim, 
uh, we suggest that adding a HTTP request rate limiter whenever possible. In summary, our paper proposed a novel CDN convex attack that leverages the variety of path latency to launch pulsing DDoS attack against any TCP services. Besides the basic attack, we also propose four enhanced attacks, achieving a bandwidth concentration ratio of over 1,000. That's all my presentation. Thank you all for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to play the demonstration video. Simulated traffic is released instantaneously. It can lead to the crash of a latest WordPress blog. The upper section monitors the network, CPU, and memory status of both the attacker and victim servers. The lower section provides an observation of the victim's website from a user's perspective. The left side monitors the operational status of the victim's website, which is currently running with an average response time of about 760 milliseconds. The right side simulates user access to the victim's website, showing that the victim website are operational. At this point, the attacker initiates the attack. From the top left corner's attacker traffic monitoring window, you can see that the attacker's outbound bandwidth is approximately 7 megabits per second. Since a pulse attack requires a considerable amount of time to accumulate traffic, the subsequent attack process will be accelerated by a factor of 50. The, the pulse will arrive in a few seconds. After approximately 10 minutes, the first wave of the pulse is about to arrive. At this point, the monitoring platform detects a sharp increase in the victim website's response time. The victim's website is no longer accessible. It will remain in a down state until the administrator restarts the server. At that time, the attacker can initiate a new round of pulse attacks, keeping the website consistently down. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you.